I'm back. Mr. Clark's back. Time to take a look at take a look at topic 11.1 as Europeans explore overseas as we move into the age of exploration. Some of the key objectives for 11.1, we're going to understand the major causes of European exploration. We're going to analyze how the Portuguese and the Spanish explorers uh, went into the New World and began to expand. We'll describe how the Portuguese established footholds on Africa's coast. We'll describe uh, European searches for a direct route to Asia. Okay, as we go through, once again, just remember you're going to respond out. And as we go through the questions, try and think through the responses on your own before I even take you through them to see what type of understanding you might have for the particular topic. So question one, why were the European explorers looking for new trade routes or routes to Asia in the early 1400s? The Europeans wanted the valuable spices found in Asia. They wanted to cut out the Muslim and Italian merchants who controlled the land. They wanted to become more wealthy. And of course, they wanted to spread Christianity. This is most often remembered as uh, the three G's, the motivating factors behind European exploration, which was God, gold, and glory. And we'll take a little more look in detail at that in a moment. Here's a couple images for you, one of which is a stock image that I copy and pasted in there. Another one is an actual project where students had put together their visual image for God, Golden Glory. We've done that in the past. So reasons for colonization. You can see the God aspect, the gold aspect, and the glory aspect. God meaning religion and society and education and culture kind of to civilize and Christianize the native people. The gold aspect would be the chief reason why Europeans went into the new world, which was for uh, monetary reasons. And then lastly, glory. This is kind of the political reasons, the power, the prestige that went along with the idea that you added additional territory to your holdings. Two, why were Europeans able to explore and travel greater distances along the sea during the 1400s. So when you think about advancements in technology, an astrolab, which used the stars to navigate, the compass, bigger and stronger ships were designed, all of which helped to lead to what is remembered as the age of exploration. Three, next we'll look at Portugal as it explores the seas. Now you see, uh, Prince Henry of Portugal, he's examining a chart with his men, as depicted by modern Portuguese artist Adriana de Sousa Lopes. Uh, so we look here at the uh, Prince Henry the Navigator. He's kind of putting forth his goal and vision for his country and for his people. Three, how did Prince Henry the Navigator of Portugal hope to find a better trade route to Asia? So Portugal explored the coast of Africa and established ports along the way. In 1488, uh, Bartholomew Diaz rounded, the, rounded Africa at the Cape of Good Hope. So if you look at the map here, this is going to actually show you the movement of Diaz. And the Cape of Good Hope here is where South Africa is located today. In 1497, Vasco da Gama sailed around Africa and reached Asia. And you can see da Gama projected in the green going all the way around and reaching India and Portugal, Portugal, because of these movements around the globe became a very wealthy and powerful nation by establishing ports and trade routes uh, much sooner than some of uh, its European counterparts. Four, why did Spanish leaders finance Christopher Columbus's expedition? Now keep in mind, uh, Columbus was Italian and his idea was initially rejected in Italy. And so he went to Spain and petitioned the king and queen there in order to get the funding he needed to fund his expedition. 
And of course, the Spanish leaders, their financial goal was to establish a faster trade route to Asia. So the original idea of Columbus was to sail, to go east by sailing west. And they thought that when they were moving westward across the Atlantic, they would eventually hit Asia. But that's when we uh, discovered, as we're going to see, uh, the new continents in North and South America. Okay, so in this image here, mid much activity, Columbus prepares to depart Spain in August of 1492 as Columbus is going to sail the ocean blue. Next, we're going to complete a chart on Columbus's expeditions across the Atlantic. When did he set sail? August the 3rd, 1492. How many ships were part of his expedition? Well, the number is three. And the three ships are the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. I was just editing as I went along, just because the ships should be italicized as the name of a ship. Three, where and when did these ships land? October 12, 1492, Columbus Day in the Caribbean. So when you think about Columbus, obviously he's a much vilified person in history now because of some of the exploitation of Native Americans. But at the time, he was hailed as a person who opened up the new world. Six is Spain and Portugal race to claim territory from their expeditions. How did the church settle their disputes? The church is a much bigger, I guess, impact around this period of time in history from a political standpoint than it is today. I mean, it has some influence on po politics today, but nothing like it did back during this period of time in history. The Pope had a lot more power. So the Pope settled the matter of uh, colonization in the new world between Portugal and Spain. The Pope settled the matter with the Treaty of Tordesillas. Uh, the Treaty of Torresias established a line of demarcation. You can see the dotted line that runs from north to south here in the center of the map. So this basically went a, along a line of longitude. West of the line was territory that Spain could settle, and obviously they're getting an unfair amount of territory. Not exactly certain as to why the Pope decided to divide it up this fashion. So anything west of this line could be colonized by the Spanish. Anything east would be the Portuguese. That's why Portugal colonized what is today modern day Brazil. And that's why the Brazilian people speak Portuguese. So in reality, this line of demar demarcation gave the Spanish the majority of the land. Seven had a new world become known as America. The Italian sea captain America Vespucci wrote a journal about his trip to the New World. A map made maker later on putting together the map helped to create a map of the territory and in honor of America Vespucci uh, named the new territories uh, America, North and South. Okay, question eight, why was Ferdinand Magellan's exped expedition significant? In 1519, he sailed with five ships from Spain, crossing the tip of South America into the Pacific Ocean. Magellan reached the Philippines and Asia, and Ma Magellan would become the very first sailor to circumnavigate or sail around the world. Nine. By the 1500s, what other European countries were exploring and establishing footholds in Africa? France, England, the Netherlands. Ten. Why do many, Amer why do many European nations want to explore the and colonize Africa? Obviously, they wanted to profit from the ivory trade and also to obtain slaves. And in addition to that, to spread Christianity. 11, analyzing the map, Portugal led the way in exploring the world by ships. Spain and other countries soon followed. 
how did Magellan's route to Asia differ from the routes of other explorers? Well, obviously we had uh, discussed a little bit previously, and we can see that his route is going to go all the way around the world. And then the final question based on the uh, little chart here, which explorers helped to find a Western water route to Asia? And they are the bottom three there, Columbus, Balboa, and Magellan. So hopefully you enjoyed our introductory lesson here, 11.1 .1 on the age of exploration. And until next time, Mr. Clark is out.